Hello, and welcome to Eden Technologies video series on enterprise data security and data loss prevention. Today's video is on Semantic Endpoint DLP and will be both an overview and a demonstration. After a brief introduction, I will give you an overview of the Endpoint DLP technology, then we'll move into a demonstration before we wrap up. Hi, I'm Andy Sherman. I'm Security Practice Lead at Eden Technologies. Um, I have had a lot of experience in information technology, including over 15 years in IT and information security, mostly in financial services. As part of that experience, I have been involved with data loss prevention since the earliest days of the industry. As I mentioned before, this is the fourth in a series of five videos about semantic endpoint DLP. Now let's look at the technology. Endpoint DLP, as we're going to demonstrate today, is about data in use. The semantic endpoint prevent product detects confidential data as it is used on the endpoint in email, web, FTP, IM, or just about any application. It also detects confidential data as it is moved around the endpoint and copied to places like removable storage, to local disk, to printers, or pasted off the clipboard. And at any of these junctures, uh, the, uh, the designer of a DLP policy has a choice between uh, allowing, allowing the transaction to go through and just detecting it or stopping it. The Semantic Endpoint Discover product allows storage DLP products such as Network Discover and Network Prevent to scan endpoint file systems. This uses the same endpoint agent as Endpoint Prevent so that we don't add to the agent footprint on the endpoint when, if we add this product. And we're going to cover the usage of endpoint discover briefly in the storage DLP video. Our use cases today will include email, web, and copy to removable storage. This is similar to what we did on the network side with the addition of the storage option. The policies that we're going to be enforcing are Graham Leach Bliley, which looks for US Social Security numbers and credit card numbers and confidential data of the of the company, our demonstration company. We'll have both user choice and force block scenarios, meaning the user will be notified of the violation and for less severe cases be allowed to choose to continue or, or cancel it. Or in the, for high severity, high severity violations, the system will just block it. Our setup includes an, an endpoint agent running on running on a virtual workstation. It's connected to the DLP endpoint server, which is a server that can that can manage many, many agents. It pushes policies to the, all the agents and it gets incident data back from them. Also for more complex policies than the ones we will demonstrate here, there could be a two-stage detection where the first part of the detection is done by the agent but needs to be processed more on the server before creating an incident. The DLP endpoint server is controlled by the Enforce server, which pushes policies to the endpoint server and receives incidents back. The Enforce server is what provides the central console through which policies are defined and through which incidents are managed. Our test cases include both test files of customer data. This is phony data, including fields that are in scope for GLB, such as uh, account numbers and social security numbers. We have files of different sizes to demonstrate different actions based on the severity of the violation. We also have test files of company confidential data. For our, our demo company Delahoo, we have three classifications, internal use, confidential, or restricted. Those uh, have defined markings in documents which we can detect with the DLP system. We can also define different severities based on the classification and take different actions. And now on to the demonstration. Hi, so now we're on our demo machine and I've logged into the DLP console to show you that we have two policies that we're enforcing. Graham Leach Bliley, which as we saw in the network demo, looks for credit card numbers and US Social Security numbers. We have an exception for internal email, um, which is anything for whom all recipients are in the Delahoo.com domain. Um, we have response rules, 
We have hard blocks for email, web, and USB, and a generic pop-up for everything else to allow the user option to either let the transaction go through or to stop it, to cancel it. Similarly, we have another policy for Delahoo Confidential. We have the three classifications, internal use, confidential, restricted, each with its own severity, low, medium, and high. Um, again, we exempt purely internal email. Um, it, typically on the network, you don't need to do that because of where, where you would be monitoring, but for, for email on the endpoint, all email, internal, external, is all seen by the agent. So we, if we want to exempt internal email, we have to do that explicitly. Again, response rules. Um, we have hard block for restricted files for email, web, or USB, or generic pop-up for things that are less severe. Okay, so let's start with email. I'm going to start by sending to my friend Jeff our customer list, the small one. I'm going to attach it and send it. And then I get a pop-up. And pop-up's got a timeout that I have set for five minutes. Um, and I'm going to say, my manager approved of this. And so then it gets sent. And if we look, we see that Jeff received the email with the file attached to it. Now, if I try to send Jeff the bigger list, this one gets blocked. And so we get a pop-up just telling us that it has no options, just says this email is blocked because it contains an excessive amount of PII. Names the policy, gives the hotline number. I dismiss it, but the, the message is still unsent and remains in the drafts folder. Um, in addition, for this block, I received, as with the network policy, I received, I've set it up to send me and my manager an email um, um, notifying us of, of the violation and that it was blocked. Because I had a pop-up, it's less, less important to send me the email than it is to send my manager to notify him what I was doing. Similarly, if I want to send out a confidential document, I send out something marked for internal use, hit send, and I get a pop-up. Again, I'll say my manager approved of this. And Jeff gets it. If I attempt to send a restricted document to Jeff, Then I get the message that it was blocked. And the draft remains unsent. In addition, because it was a block, my boss and I each get notified that I tried to do this. Now, similarly, I, can, I have, can enforce the same policies on the web. So if I go to my Norton Zone folder and I attempt to upload a file, if I attempt to upload the small customer file, it asks me why I do this. I say this is part of an established business process because I'm sharing it with somebody who's authorized to get it. And it appears there. If I try to upload, 
say a restricted file then I get the block message and zone gets an error now if we go to the DLP console to look at the incidents then we can see how these were handled and I'm going to reorder these so that they go from oldest to newest rather than vice versa so we see that I sent email the email event this symbol here with the the bubble and the exclamation point point means that I allowed it through but but gave a reason the stop sign as we saw in the network demo means that it was blocked and and if we go to the incidents and we see that also for the web ones so you see the little email symbol for email the little web symbol for web the lock means this was HTTPS we see the one that I allowed and the one that I blocked so if we look at the incidents much as um, much as we saw in the network demo it shows us what the violations were by highlighting them in addition I picked a checkbox that said my manager approved of this and it shows that in the incident um, it has who I am it has all the contact information for me and my manager uh, the name of the file um, and if I want to resolve this if I'm the incident responder looking at this and I want to resolve this by saying um, this is an education issue then I have a button here to click that you know because I said I will probably send a note to the user and the manager saying are you, you know, are you sure you wanted to do this give some user education on policy and then the incidents resolved and similarly I can handle all of them like that if I'm the responser, res, responder now if we look at removable storage I have a thumb drive attached to this this endpoint and it has a folder on it called DLP testing that we're going to copy things into if we bring up the documents folder if I start by copying the small customer file to it I get the pop-up asking me do I really want to do this um, I say it's part of an established business process and allow it um, if I want to copy the restricted document to it this gets blocked it gives me the block pop-up and nothing gets copied if I copy the confidential document to it I get the pop-up again and this time I think better of it and say no I don't really want to do that and I cancel it if we then go back to the console to the incident list and let's refresh the list so we'll see the last one where I canceled it a new symbol shows up a bubble with an X and that means that the incident was canceled and you can see the agent response users are notified the user canceled um, I left the default I did not know transferring this data was restricted as the selection it shows me again what the violation what the violation text was here um, if I go to the next incident this one was blocked and again you see here the technology is that it was endpoint removable storage little USB symbol um, here's the violation and the stop sign indicates that the system just flat out blocked it and the earlier incident the uh, customer file the uh, it shows us what the violations are um, and it shows that I allowed it and said this is part of a business process also um, um, be on the on the one that was blocked because this was a block and a severe violation it also sent a notification to me and to my manager that I attempted to, to copy restricted document to a thumb drive and that they blocked it
And that concludes our demonstration. So today we gave you an overview and demonstration of Semantics Endpoint DLP technology. The final video in the series will demonstrate the storage DLP module. As always, feel free to come to our website, www.edentechnologies.com, for more information. And specifically, you can, you can follow the, the second URL for information on our data loss prevention practice. Please feel free to send any questions to, to connect at edentechnologies.com. Or if you have security questions or comments on this video series, send them directly to me at asherman at edentechnologies.com. On behalf of Eden Technologies, I'd like to thank you for your attention and for joining us today.